Um, what, I, what I will tell you a little bit is about the, the central European perspective of banking, um, what banks are in, what do we think about social media development or internet development, what is happening in the market and what is the conclusion to our concept of feeder bank actually uh, out of this development on the one side the crisis on the other side the web 2.0 development. So bankers in Germany and in, in Central Europe think, do you know this comic, Asterix and Obelix? They think they are living in this village, you know, with the guys having this drink actually to be invincible because they think Web 2.0 does not affect them. Social media does not affect them. Transparency does not affect them. I did once a presentation in Switzerland and one of the Swiss bankers asked me, what do you think, can we forbid 2.0? You know, and I just stared at him and said, no, you cannot forbid it actually, it will happen. And, and banks better get used to it uh, because it, it's 100% sure that this will take place. So we are not living up here. This is the current situation in Europe, talking about our currency. There's a big distrust because people really are afraid now that the currency euro is actually losing valuation, is losing the power of purchasing. So people start to distrust the currency itself due to the Greek crisis or dollar crisis or whatever you want to call it. There's a big distrust in a currency which is totally new to, for instance, the German population. Uh, because after World War II we had 60, 70 years of, you know, a very stable development actually within the currency, uh, including the D-Mark and then now the Euro. So, but for the first time now people are distrusting the currency and they distrust the politicians. In the same time we have a very negative sentiment with banks. People distrust the institution of a bank. Why? Because people do really think that the finance crisis is caused by the big retail, uh, not retail, but by the big privately owned banks. Um, they claim the banks to be the reason for this financial crisis. Uh, if you compare it to a time, let me say 25 or 30 years ago, if you would have asked a student, what do you want to become? And he would say, or she would say, I want to become a banker. And you would ask for the reason, why do you do so? Then the, the student would have said, yeah, because this is a very stable job. I have a high reputation. You know, this is a kind of security for my whole business life. That totally changed. As a banker today, you have a reputation which is below politicians. So this is what it changed after, within the last 30 years actually, you know. Uh, a total erosion of trust within banks causing job, uh, jobs to be cut actually, negative headlines, bashing of banks in television shows and so on. Bain and Company, which is a, a, a big consulting firm actually, um, <coughs> creates something which is called the Net Promoter Score, NPS, Net Promoter Score. And the Net Promoter Score means how many people in your customer base are promoting you? This is the, what is it, turquoise color. Gray ones are neutral and the red ones are criticizing you as a customer. And what they calculate out of it is that the big banks actually, that the big banks actually have a negative net promoter score of minus 27 percentage points. You know, this means almost a third is net is not promoting but criticizing you as a customer. This is not a very good business. You know, if you want to have a good customer relation, you shouldn't have such an NPS. Saving and loans, minus seven, minus 17. Only direct banks are doing very, very good on having and having a positive net promoter score up to point, uh, plus 13 percent. Only direct banks. Direct banks having a limited scale of products, a clear branding, um, straightforward processing. Those are the only ones having a positive net promoter score. You know, normally bankers are full of excuses. 
and saying, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, maybe minus 27, oh, maybe, maybe minus 27 is not too bad. Well, it is bad, actually, let's face it. What are, under, what are other industries doing? So these are the retail banks, in average, minus 13. Insurances, minus eight. Um, construction markets, like uh, do-it-yourself markets, you know, uh, minus eight. Telecoms, minus seven. Just imagine, all negative. More people criticizing them than promoting them. Computer hardware, plus 15. So, there you see an emotional product, like a car, positive NPS. An unemotional product like a bank, very, very negatively, especially due to the finance crisis. So this is the result out of it. And this is my favorite picture, actually. This is really showing what the German customer feels like. I'm frustrated, but loyal. Why am I frustrated? Because I'm experiencing the services and the products I'm, I'm, I'm seeing in my bank, uh, but I'm loyal because there is no alternative. And that was the moment, actually, when we thought about setting up a new bank back in 2007, saying, hey, why not founding an alternative? We had a look to the market. Internet development was so huge. Social media development, impressing. In the same time, 2008 and 2009, crisis in the finance segment. So we said, this is shouting out for a new way of banking. So what happens in the internet? Some banks do it like that. Um, 60 seconds, maybe if you wanna have something like that, uh, go to goglobe.com, they are doing really great infographics. Uh, By the way, if you Google it, infographics, social media, you get the best infographics you need for maybe your own presentations or for you doing whatever, incorporate uh, presentations and arguments. So what happens within 60 seconds, and that's an older one, what happens within 60 seconds within the web? Um, for instance, almost 700,000 search queries, 600 new videos, which add up to 25 hours of new content, um, 370,000 Skype minutes, not only female. Um, what is it else? You know, uh, I love that one. 13,000 application apps downloaded within a minute. I think this is even much stronger now. And so on. So you can see what really happens within social media. It's amazing. And at this time, normally I ask bankers, and what happens within your branch within 60 seconds? Nothing. It's walking dead. You know, they're just asking, oh, did you close it already for lunchtime? That's the only thing that happens. No, of course I'm not neutral to this point, yeah? I started my business life in the hotel industry. And if we would have acted the same way like bankers do, we would have closed down our restaurant during lunchtime. Because we, as the waiters, are hungry. So if you, as a guest, are hungry, come back at 3, a at 3 p.m., actually, when we finished our lunch. That's exactly the same way of service and customer-centric thinking. So, <coughs> 60 seconds in the web. What happens, this is German, I'm sorry that I didn't translate it, but I read it to you. Handelsblatt, which is a very famous German, very decent economical newspaper. Just to give you some figures, what happens within the e-commerce. So, because first of all, if you, if you think about the internet, you have to think about why the heck do we have the internet and why the heck it is so, so impressively successful, actually. So first of all, it's because e-commerce. You can do business via the internet. This is one of the reasons why the internet is very successful. So what, what are the figures to that? Um, e-commerce turnover in Germany in 2011 is adding up to 30, million, uh, 30 billion euros after 1.25 billion euros in 1999. So within 13 years, you have such an increase from 1.x billion euros up to almost 30 billion euros. That's a growth market on the one side. In the meantime, uh, in average, every six euro is being made in the internet of German enterprises. Every six euro, one out of six euros is being generated within the web already. 14 percent of all revenues of European community are made in the internet. 
14%. You know, just think about how banks think about the internet. Ah, come on. I, you know, even three years ago I had the question, do you think the internet is a sustainable development? Have a look to that. Every second above 14 years old has shopped at least once in the internet. 50% above 14 years old shopped in the internet. 55% of all travelers do their research in the internet. 33% book online. So this is a, a very strong development, which means research online, purchase online or purchase offline. So this is 55% research online, 33% purchase online. Um, uh, medicine market, uh, 7 billion euros market, 11% are purchasing online. Book market, 9 billion euros in total, almost 9% purchased online. Uh, no, sorry, uh, almost 18% purchased online after 9% in 2007. So we have, you know, all in all, more or less doubling the market share within five years. That's a growth market. You know, if you talk to a banker and think about what is a growth market, they think about India, Brazil, China, whatsoever, Russia, of course. But, you know, they've got the growth market on their desktop. It's within the web. But maybe that's too easy, you know? Um, real estate is, is harmed by the internet. Uh, you know, we have a lot of pedestrian areas in, in, in German city centers where you just can walk along and do your shopping and so on. No cars allowed. So they think that we have a development of minus 5% of people walking through those pedestrian areas because of the internet. So why is this important? Because those real estates within pedestrian areas are the most expensive ones you ever can have, especially in Munich where I'm coming from. So, and this is the future of shopping. I don't know whether you've seen this photograph already, but this is happening in Seoul, Korea. It's also happening in the meantime in Zurich and wherever. So this guy is standing with his smartphone in front of a, you know, what is it? Like a commercial ad. And this commercial ad, you can f take your photographs of whatever you need of the grocery store, like you need an orange juice, you need toilet paper, whatever. You know, while waiting for the subway, because this is a subway station. Of course, this never can happen in your beautiful Moscow subway stations, which Anton showed me last time. Um, but this is a subway station in Korea, and you take your photograph, and in the meantime, this is Tesco operating it in Seoul. In the meantime, while you're traveling home, the next Tesco is delivering what you just ordered out of the subway. So can you imagine what this means? First of all, if you are renting supermarket real estate, what is a supermarket real estate now? This is it. That's a supermarket real estate now. And where is the bank actually? Is there any bank in this photograph? Yes, it is. There is banking, at least in the photograph, down here, because there is payment, there's scoring, there's maybe giving a credit to the person, and so on. So banking could happen in here. But is a bank in there? No, it's doing PayPal, Square, whatever innovative services, but no bank. So what does it mean to the bank? They get squeezed out of any innovative, fast-growing, interesting marketplace. That's the problem for a bank. <coughs> Gaming, gamification. Um, an, an, another very, very important uh, and impressive uh, mega trend within the internet. And just showing some figures to you, again, I could recommend you another website which is called flowtown.com. Flowtown is, is generating, this is uh, by Flowtown uh, infographics like this, where you can see very, very nicely made infographics about social media, Facebook, Twitter, and everything you want to know, and maybe not. Um, so what is the main important point down here? Mobile gaming industry is predicted to reach 54 billion turnover in 2015. 54 billion dollars turnover. That's a big market. Again, a growth market next to you. Um, what is even more interesting is um, 
This one, 28% of social gamers in the US and in the UK have purchased virtual currency with real world money. Well, virtual currency in this sense is not the euro, but just in this sense. Um, virtual currency is a currency, I've heard you. Virtual currency <laughs> is a currency that you can use within gaming or use within social media platforms. That's a virtual currency. Like Facebook, a virtual currency is called Facebook credits. Uh, a Bitcoin is a virtual currency. Second Life Linden dollar is a virtual currency, okay? So 28% of the online gamers acquired it with real world money. This is what they call it. They call our real money real world money, you know? Crazy world, isn't it? Um, <coughs> 53% have played in the U of players in the US have earned and spent virtual currency in a social game. So see, what we talk about currency gets totally, you know, innovated, shaken up, totally new definition. So currency is not a currency anymore. If we talk about a currency, it's not the ruble or the euro, it's a Linden dollar or whatever. It gets totally new. So what does it mean to banking? Your account, what you're offering, should be in the position to deal with virtual currencies. Can you send, via the account you're operating maybe, can you send a virtual currency via your classical cash account you have with your normal bank? No, you cannot. I can give you the answer. Mobile, another mega trend, just very briefly. 1.6 billion smartphones by 2016. Um, two out of three phones ordered today in the US are smartphones. Seven, million, seven billion total number of humans being on the planet, total number of mobile subscribers, 5.9 billion. Biggest ticket, now Richard is not in anymore. Is he still in? Hey Richard, are you still there? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he shares the story. I've got this, this intro, infographic somewhere. Biggest ticket being sold via a mobile app was for $60,000. Just one, one single transaction. You know, just to think about it. What does it mean to be mobile, mobile internet commerce and so on. So banking, you know, those are the financial services being offered via mobile. Is there a bank? No, no bank at all. You know, and again, this is why I'm saying banks are really missing the point of it. Banks are really missing this innovative, you know, bandwagon. This is already going along there. So it's PayPal, it's Intuit, it's Square, it's whatever. You know, it's iTunes. It's to me the biggest bank we have on this planet. 400 million customers with banking details. 400 million. That's impressive. So. Okay, that's, that's always, you know, midterm checking. <laughs> so, and what exactly is Web 2.0 actually? So we've, we've heard about the banking crisis and the loss of trust in banks. I've, I've tried to give you an impression of how we see the development within the internet with the four main drivers, which is e-commerce, mobile internet, gamification, and Web 2.0, okay? But what does it mean now, Web 2.0? Web 2.0 means, in principle, sharing, cooperation, collaborative action. If you do this, you regain what banks have lost, trust. Interaction, integration, transparency. All this creates trust. This is why we do it. It's not because we think it's trendy to be in the web. No, this is not because we do it. It's because we want to regain trust. This is the biggest gap in between the customer and a banking institution. It's trust. This is why we do Web 2.0. And I'm not saying this is why we do social media because I think this is something different. Web 2.0, sharing, cooperation, collaborative action. If you want to read more about it, Clay Sharkey, Here Comes Everybody is a book which I read and which I think is really bringing it to the point why people love Web 2.0. So um, it's about multiplying. This person here in front of the New York Stock Exchange has a very clear opinion about um, Lehman Brothers that was happening those days. Even if he does hard in spelling, um, he has a clear message to the Lehman Brothers. 
Would we know about this person without the internet? No. And this is why I love it, because I know about this guy. And I had a look to Google and I was typing in chump you fuckers, what I you know, frequently do, like typing in such nasty words. And chump you fuckers, and I found 750,000 related websites. Can you imagine? 750,000 related websites. And that was only Googling for the picture of it, not for the text of it. So this was not Google Universal Search, that was only the picture. 750,000 websites relating to this action. Before the web, this guy would have been totally unknown. With the web, we know it, everybody. And I am in Moscow and tell you about it. Again. So, and even more I found, you can buy t-shirts <laughs> saying, jump your fuckers. <laughs> That's the web. And I must say, and I must admit, this is what I really love. You know, this is what it is about. So of course, as a bank, you are totally scared about that because you say, oh my goodness, you know, social media and web 2.0, what a risk to me. This is why I try to stay out because this is risky. And I might tell you, this is exactly the wrong reaction because you have to jump in to reduce risk. Because if you participate, only by participating, you can reduce the risk by participating in those discussions and by saying, listen, this guy, okay, we understand that he's angry, but we did A, B, C, D, E as action points, and this is why we think he's, you know, maybe overdoing it a little, you know? So this changes the whole scenario. This is, you know, when I've been to university, I've learned that this is the, the funnel, actually. We have to work in marketing. It's attention, interest, desire, action. And action means execution. This means get the customer and do the sale. So this is now totally changing, and it's more and more changing towards what I would call a service marketing. It's about, of course, awareness. Um, you have to understand social media before that. Education and engagement. Education and engagement. Why the heck should I educate my customers? Why the heck should I engage with my customers? Yeah, because I do not, you know, I do not want to just sell it. I want to convince them and prove them that my service is the best on a very transparent level. Totally different approach now. Will you be successful as a hardcore sales guy? No, forget it. Because people maybe will be more looking to, to other guys sharing information about you. Impact on shoppers, using sharing. 62% of shoppers have a look, read friends sharing. 62% of your friends read what you shopped if you publish it. 62%. That's not too bad, isn't it? Even in more interesting, out of the 62, 75% click on the link you maybe shared what you shopped. And those studies say that 50% out of the 75 shop. So think about it being a bank, avoiding social media com communication, pulling back out of social media or web 2.0, whatever you want to call it, trying to avoid discussions about your product. You will see that you will be out of this decision funnel, what we would call social commerce, actually. So normally bankers then reply, yeah, but people do not talk about money in public. I don't know how this is in Russia. I can tell you um, maybe two answers to that. First of all, yes, the bankers do not want the people to talk about money because this would create transparency and maybe people would find out that the products are not very much in their favor, but in the favor to the bank, which is different. And the other thing, the other point is, which I think is more striking, is it's totally boring to talk about a boring banking product. It's so boring. It's so unsexy talking about an account. I've got a cash account. Oh! And I fall asleep over my keyboard. You know, I've got a cash account. It's totally average. It's disgusting. It's disintegrative and a black box product and very expensive. I love it. What the fuck? Forget it. It's about the pro if the product is not sexy, nobody will talk about it. If you've got a cool product, people will talk about it. If you've got the latest trend in fashion, people will talk about it. If you've got, why the heck we talk about an iPhone? 
What is so great about it? Somehow it's great to talk about it, you know? So this is, I think, the real answer. It's so boring to talk about banking. And this is not the fault of the people, it's the fault of the banks. Banks created boring products, not the customers. So what is the concept of feeder bank? After bashing all the banks, you know? So we offer a community, payment, and banking. And as I said, we are working in, in this square of strategic markets, growth markets. This is what we are focusing on. It's web 2.0, mobile internet, gamification, and e-commerce. This is the market segment Feeder Bank is operating in. So this is the website, if you have a look to the homepage. Um, this is the core of it, it's the community in here. You have all the discussions, can you see it a little bit, yeah? Uh, all the discussions like, like a timeline in Facebook, you can place your questions, people can answer that, you can do this with your nickname, you can ask the people, do you think gold is still a good price or is it too expensive now? People will reply to this. Um, <clears throat> you can see how you can rate and recommend all banking products in Germany. Uh, you, you can be a professional advisor and can participate. This is totally open to all kind of money experts, users and products. This is not reduced to just our feeder bank thinking. This is as open as our users are. Total open platform. I did it once myself, it was I think in February. We've been sitting in a Greek restaurant in Munich, eating against the crisis, you know. Um, this is why we frequently eat in Greek restaurants and drink Uzo. Um, and my friend said, yeah, how about your funny banking community and so on. I said, yeah, what do you want to know? Just because you do not understand it, you offline us, yeah? So they said, yeah, okay, it's a quarter past nine. Why don't you place a question in the community and we'll have a look if there's an answer coming back, you know? And I said, okay, what do you want to know? Ah, how about gold? That was the example I just mentioned. So I placed the question, how about gold? What do you think? Still expensive? Is it a bargain? Shall I buy or not? My friends want to know it. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I have no arguments anymore. Support me. Question placed at 2114. First answer, 2122 and seven seconds. Second answer, 2122, 59 seconds. 2149, 46. Third answer. This goes down to midnight. Tenth answer. And if you could read German now, you have to believe me, all decent answers. There was no like, blah, 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 lol, OMG, you know, stuff of thing. Pardon? Yeah, no, it was nothing embarrassing. It was definitely very valid what the people posted on my question with links to get research and so on. Just compare this with your normal bank if you would, you know, send an SMS to your banker at a quarter past nine asking this guy, what do you think about gold? When would you get the answer, first of all? Second, what would be the answer? Oh, Mr. Kroner, we have no gold offer. This was not my question. Yeah, we have an index certificate. This was not my question. Yeah, I signed it myself. This was not my question. You understand what I'm saying? You know, because if you want to, if you want to have a, a normal question and you want to get a normal answer, you get a product as an answer. <coughs> but this was not my question. I want to have neutral advice from the so-called expert, oh, if he is an expert. A brief one, this is, I, um, you have to see it on the web, it's much better than, it's an, a brochure we did, we did together with the community. You know, we, we, did, we could not finish, you must imagine, we have currently approximately 145,000 registrations with Feeder Bank. We are 27 members of staff, including the board. So we did not have the time to, to finish this brochure our own. What did we do? We placed the brochure within Google Documents and we invited the community to finish it. So the users wrote it. The users made it. Because we said, hey, users, you know why you are with this bank, so tell the other one. That was the reason, and that was the approach to do so. This is what we share on Facebook, like transaction numbers, like asset allocations within precious metals. We share this in our Facebook channel, and because I think this is a very valid information. I'm not saying person by person that Anton has 10 tons of gold at Fido Bank and Matthias 100 grams of silver. This is not what I'm saying, but we are, you know, in total saying what is the behavior, financial behavior of our customers. And 
the product side, you see with the product website, you see how other users are rating this product like you are used to that maybe from Amazon or other e-commerce websites. We are the only bank in Europe for whatever reason I don't know that allows customers to rate a product. What is so crazy about it? You know, we have it with restaurants, with wines, with CDs, with DVDs, with books, you know. Do I have to be a professional author of a book to rate a book? No. Why do banks think I have to be a professional banker to understand and rate a bank? How arrogant. Aligning traditional banking products like lending money with crowd finance is what we do. And I guess out of your Russian, uh, you, you talked about the light pins, Anton? Yeah. No, not really, just a little. And what we did is we invented the so-called like sense. What does it mean? It's the like interest rate. As easy as I can explain it to you, it means the more likes, the higher is the interest rate in our accounts. Okay? More likes on Facebook. Every 2,000 likes, the interest rate raises of 0.1% on the feed or pay account. So this is capped, yes. So we do not commit economical suicide like, you know, um, but nevertheless, this is so crazy that most people talk about it and say, hey, I found a bank, totally crazy, have a look, you know, the more likes, the more interest. Um, why do we do something like that? Because we have no money to spend for commercials. We are an entrepreneurial approach of a bank. So this is why we have to be more innovative than others, more creative than others. And this is why we invented by accident the like sense. This is how the account looks like. You see, this is my cash account. This is peer-to-peer -peer lending integrated into the account. So I landed 328 euros to, fr to friends. I borrowed 22 euros from friends. I have within saving products of feeder bank 50,000 euros and so on. I have precious metals all in one account, all just one mouse click away. Peer-to-peer -peer banking, crowd banking, precious metals, foreign currencies, virtual currencies, all in one account. This is how the trend, yeah, you have to see it on the web because I think the Beamer doesn't really deliver it now. Um, left side, how to get money into the account. Right side, how to get money out of the account. App, you know, which will be in future. We are, no, not only in future, from today, we, we are already open for third party apps. Now, if you would have something like an innovative offer, we would integrate it into our feed or pay account. It would be easily to be adopted via an API, so you can integrate your offer via an app into feed or pay account. In future, customers can say, like on your iPhone, this app, go, this app, stay, I take it, I, I'll use it, I don't want to have it. You can customize your feed or pay account in future, like with your iPhone. This is also customer integration. This is how money transactions look like. You can make it more emotional. <laughs> um, why? Because why did we do so? There is no law in German banking regulation, not a single law in German banking regulation that says banking must be boring. No law. So you can make it more exciting. You can make it more emotional. You can make it more touchy, you know, easy. You can send money out of feed or pay account. You can send, I'm done in a second, Anton. You can send money to a mobile number. You can send it to an email address. Of course, you can send it to a Twitter address. Of course, this is social media banking. You know, out of the same account. You can forward money via your mobile app. You can lend money a mobile app to somebody else and this guy could use it the next, very next second via feed or prepaid MasterCard no matter where you are on this planet. In Moscow, if my feed or pay account wouldn't have enough buying power and I need to pull cash for the cab driver in Moscow, I, would, I could call my friend and say, listen, send me 50 euros. And within the next second, even on a Sunday, even on a bank holiday, I can pull it out of the cash machine. That's speed banking. Virtual currencies, what is a currency? If you want to have a look to Fidelis Pay video on YouTube, I really heartily invite you. 
This is where we explain how we set up a payment and banking offer for game developers on a white label basis. Very, very interesting product.